Okay, thank you everyone for joining us um, for this panel right now. I uh, want to thank the Shipple Connors um, for having us. And I want to let everybody introduce themselves first, and I'll go last. And, and then we'll start the Q&A after the introductions. Okay, hi, I'm Sarah Gish. And um, before I say something about me, I just want to say that I'm giving away two CDs. I co-produced this CD here called Houston, Our Roots Are Strong, and it's a CD of songs about 14 historic Houston landmarks. So first of all, does anybody just want the CD? Okay, oh, well, there's too many. Okay, um, <laughs> I thought there would only be like one person that actually wanted it. Um, okay, then who's, what's today? 10-5, right? 10-6, November, uh, what month is it? It's October 6th. So whose birthday is in the month of October? Did I give you one already? You, do you want it? You don't really want it. No, because I already tried to give it to you the other day. Okay, <laughs> whose who's birthday is in the month of October? Okay, look, here's what we'll do. Who wants it, come run and get it. Okay, come on, go. Whoever wants it, come and get it. Come on, come on, run. Whoever gets here first. I will give all of these away, actually. So there we go. Just come take them. I have to say one for Robin. Okay, so <laughs> why not? So um, anyway, so I have my own company called Gish Creative. And, and when you take these, you have to make sure you tweet and Facebook and all that stuff, okay, about them. Um, and I, uh, I'm an artist. I'm a publicist. I've been doing marketing since 1985. Um, and I have an art car. I make, most recently, it's, it's an art car with 1,961 bottle caps on it. And I make art out of bottle caps and hubcaps, and um, I now make bottle cap jewelry. But my, my big background is mostly PR and marketing, and I've moved over to art um, in the last 10 years or so. So I'm really excited to be on this panel with Carolyn and Gonzo. Hi, I'm Carolyn Figueroa. I just recently got married, so I was Carolyn Casey, but now Figueroa. Um, and I'm married, actually, to this man right here who... His last name is not Bigger Row, it's 247. <laughs> um, so I don't know how that happened. But um, I'm a strong supporter of the arts in general. Um, and I uh, became, um, just sort of happened about, I don't know, si six years ago that I became a big, um, played a big part in aerosol warfare and arts organization as um, more of a support and admin team member. So um, I'm the creative side as in um, admin and um, decision making and, and that part. So um, that's my background. My name is Gonzo247. Yeah, that is my legal name at this point. Um, more people know me about what by that name and sometimes I don't even remember my real name. Um, anyhow, uh, so I am a street artist, uh, graffiti artist exactly. And uh, I, I've been doing uh, crazy marketing, as in writing my name everywhere since 1985. So um, my background is in the street and urban art culture, and I've worked my way up to owner-operator of Aerosol Warfare um, Street Art Gallery. We're located here in Houston, and we promote uh, um, the spray paint culture. And I'm Grace Rodriguez, and you can see on my bio all the places I work with, and um, I think of myself as a creative midwife because um, I like to help creative ideas happen, whether it's through funding through DFJ Mercury or um, with branding and um, marketing and design at Culture Pilot. And um, now we're starting this new creative incubator called C2 Creative out of uh, Taft and Fairview. If you're interested, let me know, and um, we'll invite you to our, to our opening ceremony or private super secret beta opening ceremony. Um, but... You're here today because you are creative, and we want to make sure that we address a lot of your, your questions or what, what you want to get out of this. So feel free at any time to raise your hand and, and jump in and consider this a conversation as opposed to just a talk. talk at you. Um, and everybody knows that about Steve Jobs passing, right? It's not going to be like, I'm going to have tears in the room. Okay. Um, so I, I looked at a lot of the things that he, he stood for, what he meant to a lot of people. And when I went through a lot of his quotes, he said that he wanted, he did all of what he did because he wanted to put a ding in the universe. And I was, that made me think, you know, well, what makes you do what you do? What inspires you? Uh, what inspires me is, um, it, it, I'm not Steve Jobs, obviously, but I do like that concept of being able to 
uh, create, um, I guess, a memory or create a, uh, a a notch in 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 a timeline. However, that notch may be where you you manifest and create this thing, whatever that thing is, and then you leave it behind for the rest of the society to look at and appreciate or hate or whatnot. But make some noise, make something happen. Uh, not even for today, but for like ten seconds ago, and for the rest of history. I agree with that, and I also feel like it's important to, on a personal level, um, just find that fulfillment within you. Um, I uh, not only for art isn't made just for the public, but most of the time it's real personal, um, and it can have a different message for everyone. But um, for that person, and uh, on a personal level, it's um, more important. Well, I think, first of all, being an artist, you have to be passionate about what you are doing because a lot of times you're not going to get instant payback for doing that. Um, but what inspires me is really um, a couple of things. One is connecting people so be, and being connected to people and especially things like this where you're with people. Um, that's really great. And also another thing that really inspires me is um, my big motto is let me help you ignite your life. So to see people you know, see them and see what they are and help them tell their story is really um, inspiring to me, so. You're talking about people. How do you engage them or um, make them a part of your creative process? Oh, gosh. Well, for some reason, I keep thinking of this guy I met at Walmart yesterday <laughs> named Lemon. <laughs> and I kept wanting to ask him if he had a brother named Lime. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so... <laughs> So I'm saying that because that's how you engage people. You, you know, we started talking to Lemon. He's the guy that checks the receipts, you know. So, of course, he didn't really check mine on the way out because um, I engaged with him as I was stealing something. But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other story. So, but I just think you engage with people by um, getting their attention. You know, I've been in marketing, like I said, for 25 years. And so what I love to do, like, you would never know that these are bottle cap earrings, would you? But on the back of them, there's a little light, Miller Lite um, thing, which are, by the way, one of the best bottle caps. Miller Lite and Bud Light are really good bottle caps. Um, but you engage them by surprising them, by um, getting them. And it's, it's what Gonzo and Carolyn do, too. I'll let y'all answer that. But, you know, we just get out there. And you can't engage somebody by sitting back in a corner and not doing anything. You've got to be out there and mixing it up and fun. I mean, that's my thing is fun. Fun and fun opportunities and um, sharing experiences and uh, trying new things. Always try new things. Um, because no matter what, when you try something new, um, the real you will come out. <laughs> and uh, But it will be a, um, you learn from the other people involved in that, in that new thing that you're trying out. I think that uh, as a street artist, um, by default, the, the nature of the work and where it's placed, you are automatically engaging with this public, um, whether it's a specific person you're trying to reach or just this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the placement and, and kind of the, the medium is the message, and you're, you are already interacting and including this audience, um, and that's one way to engage with, with people. Personally, I'm, I'm kind of like my life is a reality show, just there's no cameras on me yet. But I, I try to engage with everyday people in the sense that I, I videotape a lot of what I do. I, um, uh, some of y'all may have or may not have seen some pictures of me. I have these crazy goggles that I wear, and now you know, but the goggles are actually a, a video camera. So I, I try to observe and I record as much as I can, um, and I like to interact with people. Everything from the guy working behind the counter at the gas station to a, a bum on the corner to the guy at Walmart. And, and I like to interact with these people because then they themselves inspire me because you can have the craziest conversation with somebody. And what I've noticed is when I used to carry a video camera around, people tend to get shy or they, they kind of change their persona because they know that you're recording them. When it's your, you're just some weird ball headed dude with goggles on, um, they're, like, they, they're not even thinking that you're recording them. So they're more natural. And, and the responses that I get from people is just amazing. But then they inspire me because I, I get like this realness from these people. And then I, in turn, try to interpret that and make some artwork with it. Um, you're talking about mixing and trying new things. Um, how important is that the remix culture? I know you also do a lot of um, community projects where you work with. You have an arts organization. 
Um, how does that, how do all of those things work together to create your, your art? Well, I think that uh, a good part of, of what we do is, is try to keep moving forward, try to keep uh, swimming in different pools and, and, and take the left fork instead of the right one. And, and, and always, we try to keep ourselves in fresh water. Um, if, you, if you swim, if you're a fish in a bowl, you're going to breathe all the oxygen out of it and you're going to die. So you got to find a way to grow some feet and jump to the next bowl. And, and mixing with different crowds, mixing with different genres uh, of, of just people try, they, they, they end up in this little safe harbor and they stay within that harbor. And if you're going to get anywhere in your business or you're going to get anywhere in a personal level, you have to be able to break away from your, your normal setting and, and go out and experience what else is out there. Because if, if you don't, you're going to be, you know, you, you're going to be the same place 20 years later thinking about the same things and and still tweeting when tweeting would probably be dead by now or in 20 years. Can you give a specific example of how you did that with, um, with aerosol warfare? Uh, well, a really crazy way is that I ended up going to Africa, <laughs> that, that you can't get any more out of your fishbowl than going to a wholly di different continent on a different side of the planet and uh, working on a project out there for eight weeks. And again, that's totally out of my comfort zone. I'm used to being in America with running water and electricity and to get transported to another country where, you know, in the middle of nowhere, trying to make something happen. Uh, just the, the nature of, of my surroundings, uh, you know, getting away from that comfort zone really just helps you to think on totally different levels. And it, it forces you to come up with solutions where if you stay at home all the time and do the things that you're normally used to, you're not going to really provoke yourself to come up with these crazy solutions for random problems. And I, I guess um, in, in addition to that, a really crazy thing for me to do is say, yes, you can go to Africa and yes, I'll manage what you usually manage. So I guess with that, it's, it's um, the, the team effort is, is always really important. Um, we mix um, as a team. Um, and we have to find those right team members that, that have a love for what we do. Um, and they will say yes to anything because they love what they do. Um, when I was growing up, my dad had two phrases. He was a German professor. And one of them was non illegitimus carbondum, which means don't let the bastards grind you down. <laughs> and then the other one <laughs> was carpe diem, which means seize the day. And um, some of y'all know this because you're a Facebook friend of mine, but I met Beyonce on Monday and um, I got a photo with her and I gave her my bottle cap earrings. And this is all because I seized the day. And um, what I did was I grabbed my camera and told everyone there that I was an official photographer, <laughs> even though they didn't know I was coming to photograph. And um, so I got behind many, many doors because of that. And I'm just saying that because you have to do crazy things for your art I mean, I was doing that all because my goal that day was to get bottle cap earrings to Beyonce and Tina Knowles. That was it. And at the end of that day, I got that crazy, beautiful photo of me and Beyonce. And I got to tell her to wear my earrings. And then she told me she liked my earrings, you know? So there's my celebrity endorsement. And it's all because I posed as a photographer. <laughs> but, but I really do think that, you know, just seize the day. Listen to that voice inside of you that says, you know, like I told um, somebody looking for a job, I said, tomorrow, you, and hopefully he'll do this. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but if you see him tomorrow, you'll know. That was my idea. Um, but I told him to put on the back of his jacket looking for a good job, you know, in white letters. I mean, what a great place to do that right here. So seize the day because you have one opportunity to be in this moment, you know. So that's, I don't know if that, I didn't get the remix culture question. That sounded really intelligent. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That was I mean, above me. <laughs> no, but you also Did that answer up another. You brought up another good point. Um, it's goal setting, right? Because that the way you took is is like the military way of achieving a goal. They set it, and then they give people leeway to achieve it in however they want to, or however whatever they have. Um, so how does that like these processes, or are there organized steps that you take to? Oh, gosh, for me, um, I think, it, you know, we had talked about creativity earlier last week, I think, but, it, you know, it's like this magical mix of opportunity and then intuition. And then um, for me, there's a lot, I'm, you know, I'm right and left brain. And so it, there's this taskmaster in me that goes, 
oh my God. So Beyonce is coming to town. So you make her earrings, you get to, you know, just all these different goals. Um, so, but I think it's real important to, you know, it's like that silly little song, you know, let your, what is it? Let your light shine. Don't hide under a bushel or whatever. Um, you know, I, I think that, and, and I will make this important point is that the reason that we need to let our light shine is because it inspires other people to let their light shine. And so when Gonzo goes to Africa, and I feel like I was there, when Gonzo takes photos, because I, I can tell you what the house looked like because of, you know, Facebook. But when he goes there, I know well, he's there for three months too, but, but, you know, when he goes there, I think, gosh, maybe I could go to Africa with my art car or whatever. I mean, I didn't think that necessarily, but, you know, it just inspires. I think people get so afraid of being a loud mouth or being out there with their stuff that if you're not out there with your stuff, you're not going to change the world. You're not going to inspire anybody. And, you know, you're not going to do what you're meant to do. So. And I always try to put a deadline on creative projects because we're more likely going to do it um, if we have a deadline and we say if we are if this doesn't happen by this date it's not going to happen and create creatively it gets us going it tells us oh we only have this amount of time to do it we better do it now you know and um, that really helps us um, do the things that we've wanted to do our long list of creative projects that we've been wanting to do and we haven't done we a deadline for all of them that's that's me though that's deadline carolyn <laughs> can you tell that carolyn's the one that gets things done and gets it all <laughs> yeah you should see our th to to do list it's it's insane but uh yeah so pretty much like the 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 crazy thing is you you have to have a crazy idea to begin with you have to have even if it's the most outlandish idea you you could ever come up with like i want to write my name in the sky right well, guess what? Someone just did it in L.A. Some graffiti writers got a hold of a plane and they were skywriting their names across the city. Like That's the ultimate way of getting up in the city is you, who owns the sky. So you, you have to have first a crazy idea and then you have to have a crazy plan of attack, uh, something that's somewhat realistic. Um, you, you can't be afraid to go off in the deep end because that's probably the best way to start. If, if you shoot for the second floor, fine, you're going to hit the second floor. If you shoot for the roof, who knows, you might even pass the roof. But even if you don't hit the roof, you're going to hit the fifth floor or the sixth floor. And I'm not talking about airplanes in a building. I'm talking about you trying to jump the building. So you just have to, you have to set your goals a lot higher than what you even can think about achieving because if, if you stay with real, realistic, achievable goals, you're going to be mediocre. I mean, you think that Steve Jobs said, oh, I want to maybe do some computer stuff. No, he, had, he wanted to change the world. And you got to have the great crazy ideas to start with that's that's the that's the bottom line start with something where you tell friends i'm going to do this and they're like you're crazy well exactly and i'm going to get it done and whether or not you reach that goal what you accomplish is going to be way more than just oh i painted a painting today all right it's interesting that you guys use the word crazy a lot um there's I like you know, the, the big buzzword in business right now is disrupt or if something is disruptive and it's basically you take an assumption and you think well what if this assumption either didn't exist or we did it completely differently. I mean, th it seems like those types of thought processes happen naturally to you. Is, is there any um, intentional or deliberate uh, goal that you have when you're creating stuff? Um, I, I think for me personally, there, there is some kind of like thing there that is the ultimate goal. But again, it's kind of hidden under these layers of things that I would love to see happen. And whether or not they happen or not, again, it's it's... It's just a matter of trying to get to this unachievable goal and, and hopefully you surpass what you really want to do. And, and on a really great day, you even surpass the, the crazy goal. Are these personal goals or are they like um, an advocacy type of goal? Are they community goals? They're, they're everything for me anyway. Um, I, I, I really like to work a lot with the community. I, I'm not going to sit here and sing a sad song or play violin, but like when I was growing up, I, I didn't really have a somebody that came in and said, hey, you know what? Yeah, you know, you, you have some talent or the liberal arts is achievable for you. It wasn't until later in life that, that I kind of got wind of that. So uh, whenever I can, I try to go back and, and, and work with, uh, you know, the lower income areas, I work with schools a lot. Uh, I try to give back because I think that like uh, Sarah was saying, you know, you bring a little light into a cave and two people can see, then they're gonna go out, get some more light. And it just, that, that the light shines on like, yeah, like that crazy song. 
was just going to say too that one of my goals is to incite change. You know, um, because like one of my favorite pieces of art that I made was something out of a um, a vegetable strainer, <laughs> and it just had a vegetable strainer and some other stuff on it. And um, you know, it just it gets people looking at vegetable strainers, going, "Oh my God, that's like." And it had like a picture of what I call Tin Can Mary, the Virgen de la Guadalupe from Mecca on there, and it just was like completely a weird juxtaposition. And so, you know, and I think that's probably what you guys do too with your art. I mean, the and I, you know, another thing I love to do is get little Facebook things going. Like at one point, I had two different Facebook controversies going on, and I won't say what they are because then we'll start one here, but. Um, it was really kind of a stressful day because I had to spend a lot of time going back and forth between like who's commenting on what and do I need to put a fire out. But I love that because it gets people waking up and getting out of their, you know, doldrums and um, really waking up to your life. Well, I just feel like um, with goals um, and then setting your goals real high and everything, it, you know, um, a lot of times when we, set goals for a specific project um we will come uh, th the learning that or what we gain from that whole project is not only um working on that one project but coming up with other projects so um what we like about the creative process a uh, process with our um, projects is that um, it creates more projects for us. It creates a brainstorm. Um, as we're achieving this one goal, we set three more. So um, it's it's awesome um, cre creatively. Well, it's also very obvious from your relationship that it that your creativity also extends to your family. Um, how are, how does your work? Um, how do you balance your work and your life? I guess and and the creativity mm. in it. Um, I, I have to say that we have an 11 year old that is by far probably the most cultured 11 year old who's been to crazy warehouse parties, who's been to um, a crazy rave on Staten Island or Governor's Island. I mean, we, our kid is numb to things to the point where I think when she's in her teens and her friends are trying to sneak out to go to some crazy warehouse party, she's like, uh uh, I've already been there, I've done that, it's not new to me, I want to stay home. She actually is probably one of the only kids like, can we just go home? Do we have to go to another art opening? Do we have to go to this party? Um, but we, we actually, we, um, we integrate our, our, we, our private life is our social life. I mean, there, there's very little that isn't exposed to everybody, but we, I think we do a really good job of managing time uh, between projects to actually kind of be a family. Um, but we're all creative. She's creative. Our daughter's creative. And we actually inspire each other to see who can out crazy the next person <laughs> yeah um we we keep things pretty balanced though i mean the art takes over at times but then there, we are real strong um we have huge families on both sides um so we love family time you know family isn't is valuable but they also are real supportive so that's been um a great um just awesome awesome benefit to have a supportive family so um that helps um you know the 11 year old can stay with grandma and grandpa because the grandparents understand the art thing so and every warehouse party has been safe and worth the 11 year old coming trust me <laughs> um i think it's really hard to balance you know because as an artist um i could stay up I mean, I was up till 1.30 this morning, I'll be honest, and I overslept, and my teenager was awake before I was, <laughs> so that's really bad. Um, but I think that we can, we can get obsessive with our art, you know, and it's like, kids, do I have kids? I don't know. There's some people back there wanting food. I don't know what they want. Um, but so I think it's real important to find that balance, but what, the way it works for me is to bring my kids with me to art stuff. And of course, my older son, who's 16 now, hates my art car, hates art, hates all that stuff. And um, he scrapes himself on bottle caps when he gets in the car. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I bring the 11-year-old to everything or to a lot of things. And I think it's real important also to show kids, and we were talking about this, we, we see each other's kids a lot. I mean, Matthew's been at aerosol warfare stuff a lot. And what's really great about it, and I will tell you, you know, I don't know if it's in relation to aerosol warfare, but or it was a show at the Contemporary Arts Museum. We went to this show, and there was like, it was a comic book show, but there was like, 
fuck you, you know, in, in the comic strips. And um, I was with my son and, and another friend whose parents were just a little bit more conservative. And I said, okay, kids, you know, on the way home, what are we going to tell mom and dad? Not that we saw that, you know. But, but for me, it's like, it's no big deal because my kids, when you look at art, you're taught how to think. I mean, you're allowed to look away from that or, you know, you're allowed to um, not go into that room or whatever. But I really, um, and maybe this isn't good parenting, but I just don't have this attitude of shielding our kids from stuff, you know, because I think that they really, really need to be taught to think for themselves. So, um, but the balance part is, I find it very hard sometimes because I get off on these projects and want to just, you know, spend all my time on them. So I try to rein myself in. Well, you, you mentioned like there's an educational side of it. And I know all of you are involved in um, finding a happy marriage between art and education. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, well, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> I remember the moment when I had to tell Alyssa about um, nude photography. Um, but um, anyway, um, I I enjoy those educational moments um, because it starts a conversation about something you don't know about um, or it um, just passes it along. It passes information along and it can come full circle where someone's educating me about something I didn't know. I'm educating them about something they didn't know. Um, we have a um, program called CKC Start Street and Urban Arts, and we um, educate um, not, we educate youth um, with uh, art elements of graffiti, street and urban arts. Um, but we also educate educators, <laughs> and that is so ironic. Um, we educate art teachers um, because they didn't learn that in college. They didn't have a graffiti art history. Um, so we get so many emails from them, and we um, we love it. We love being able to um, um, donate our time and, and our knowledge about the street and urban arts because it is an art form. Yeah, it's crazy. I tell people all the time, like, you know, even if I went to school, they didn't teach what I learned. Um, graffiti was my gateway drug to the art world because I started off doing this illegally, and the more I got into it, the, the quicker I saw the artistic element of it. And because of that, I went and discovered pop art and, and so on and so on. But um, teaching or education is, I think it's a really important tool. And um, Carolyn's actually the reason that I actually got into teaching. I, I always thought that, um, I've heard teachers say, it, teaching is a rewarding experience. And I thought that was a bunch of crap that they said to make, them feel, make themselves feel better about it. But um, she said, you should teach a class. And I'm like, whatever. And I kind of gave her this task that would never happen. So, well, you organize it and I'll do it. So about a month later, she said, here you go. There's your first class. I'm like, oh, snap. And so I taught the class and it was really crazy. At the end of the class, I saw these people that had never drawn any kind of urban art before be able to regurgitate what I told them and, and be able to draw something that was look pretty um, authentic. And I actually thought, wow, this is really cool. I was able to show somebody something that I knew. And f since then, we've, um, you know, we've taught everything from uh, at elementary school to last year, we actually did a semester at Rice University, which to me is when a, it's a highlight in, in my life. And, and I think aerosol warfare's life to coming from personally from not having a actual formal quote unquote education to be able to uh, be trusted by a major university to teach a class on graffiti, um, I thought was super awesome. But I, I think that's a, an important key and the, just speaking about creativity, it's funny because until you're actually in front of uh, specifically kids, um, your, your mind needs to be sharp as a tack. And if you really want to get yourself creative, you really want to get yourself on, on, like, on the ball, I, I challenge any of you guys to get five or six like, elementary kids and try to do some, anything with them. And, and you'll see how fast that you, you have to be on top of things. It's like, it's like being at a, um, what do you call it, like... Um, at a carnival, exactly. And, um, but yeah, so it, that's one way to really keep yourself sharp is actually hang out with a bunch of little kids because they keep it real. They'll tell you straight up what they feel and you got to be ready for that. And just about the educational component, this, this CD is a perfect example because um, I am a preservationist too and um, did some work saving the River Oaks Theater and getting it um, certified as a city landmark and they still wanted to tear it down. And by the way, they still can tear it down. All they have to do is ask permission and then wait 90 days and they can tear it down. 
But um, met with this woman, Leah White, and we started talking about preservation, and she got really excited about it and decided to make a CD, you know. And so um, what a great thing. I mean, now we've got this CD of songs about Houston landmarks and history and our story, and, you know, and now we can educate kids through music instead of standing up there and going, now class, the Astrodome, you know, it's, it's much more fun, and you can use art to educate all the time. So, and, and my son has taken classes from you guys. I forgot about that and worked with you. So, so they're great. I mean, it's a great way. Also, what they do is to teach, you know, um, legal ways with graffiti. And just, I mean, I think it's interesting how you can take anything and make it a teachable moment. So, It's interesting when you're talking about a formal education. I, I feel like you also brought them um, a formal street education, maybe. Um, so I know, like, your, your art forms are also very rooted in the community with art car and with um, aerosol worker and, and street art, um, how do you see that the community is responding? Very supportive. Um, um, I think it takes someone who has an open mind and um, open to appreci appreciating. Um, that's one thing I wanted to also comment on is um, when we're teaching or when we're um, exhibiting street art, graffiti art, um, it's not only to you know teach someone how do you draw your name in graffiti, it's to teach them to appreciate it, um, to appreciate the thought behind it, to appreciate the elements, the design aspect of it. Um, so the community has been very supportive in, in all of that and, and, and seeing how um, it takes a lot of thought behind it. It's not just spray painting on a wall um, or a canvas, <laughs> um, but it, it, there is thought behind it. Well, I mean, driving an art car that's turquoise and has seven bright orange hubcaps and what I said, 1961 bottle caps on it, you're, you can't really pick your nose when you're driving around. Um, so people do notice, and what's really cool about that is it's a very instant um, connection. I mean, I've had all kinds of people. I had one guy that kind of looked like the Grey Poupon guy, who probably no one knows who that is anymore, but wearing a tuxedo, and he rolled down the window, and he and his wife were obviously going like to the opera or ballet or something. He goes, I love your car, you know? And so it's just such a great, easy way to get people to appreciate art. And then I've had the people that look at me like, you know, and they're really scared of it or something. But, um, you know, so um, out in the community, for me, the community reaction has been great, you know? And there's, I don't know, I think that... Um, I think what it says is that people are, they're ready for something different, you know, because it's not like people have gone around and egged my car, which they won't do in Houston anyway. But, you know, I think um, this city is very supportive of strange stuff, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Perfect for us, right? <laughs> have you found that that translates to, to business and professional success as well? Uh, no, no, just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, what what happens, it's like this snowball effect because you start doing crazy things, and I know you guys know about this as well, then the media starts doing stuff and following you. And, you know, like one time I, I worked on my, this is my second art car, but the first one we worked on over Thanksgiving. And, you know, I do PR and marketing, as I said, and, and I thought, well, I'll just send out a quick press release to all the TV stations that were working on it. You know, me and my children were working on the art car, and Suddenly we had Channel 11 and Channel 2 out there, you know, just watching us make the art car. And so it's, it, um, yeah, it's really definitely brought more customers to me. It's, um, and it's given me the freedom to try new ideas, too, because I know that I have, you know, this customer over here that's paying me money, so now I can go off and do goofy bottle caps for Beyonce, you know. You want to ask another question or you want me to touch on that? Um, I, I think, uh, yes. Uh, I think the more creative you can get, the the more you're going to stand out from everyone else. Um, you know, if, if everyone here has a business card, well, what's going to make your business card stand out? They're just three and a half by two and a half pieces of paper that are different colors. So what's going to put you on top of everyone else? Well, maybe, uh, I don't know, um, you know, maybe you're wearing some crazy goggles. I don't know, maybe you're wearing some bright red shoes i mean you, you, as creative as you can get with your with yourself and your business on how you advertise um street art in general is probably the 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 most old school form of advertising because you know you're advertising yourself everywhere 
Um, and how do you do that? Well, there's stickers, there's posters, there's spray paint, there's, you know, uh, there's even uh, what they call reverse graffiti now where you have, uh, you get a um, water pressure cleaner and you actually remove the dirt and the grime on walls or sidewalks. And so instead of applying mediums, you're, you're, you're taken away and there you go. There's advertisement there. Um, I think um, creativity and how you present yourself in your company definitely is going to make you uh, just pop out from the, from the rest of the school of fish. I mean, you got to, you know, why be a guppy? You got to, you got to get, be a clownfish, you know, something deadly. Clownfish is deadly. Um, <laughs> well, can you, can you give a specific example of uh, one day at, at aerosol warfare or like creating a, a piece of work or at CKC? Like, just let us know what your day is like. <laughs> uh, well, like today, I ended up at this crazy conference talking to a bunch of people. Now, um, you know, every day, what's, what's cool is every day is different for us anyway, because since we technically don't have a boss, you know, we get home, we get there late, we send ourselves home. Uh, that's a joke. It's okay. No, um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, uh, we, every day is totally different. And I think that's what I like about what we do is uh, we're anything from at a meeting with a potential client to in the studio creating artwork. And for me personally, the fact that there is no nine to five, I'm not in a cubicle, I'm not under fluorescent lights, that in itself helps me to be more of who I want to be. And I'm not kind of driven by corporate rules that say, well, you have to wear a tie or you have to have a dress code or you have to be here by eight and you have to have lunch at 12 and you have to stay here till six and there's mandatory overtime. I mean, a lot of time with those constraints, I mean, just saying that, I feel like killing myself, you know? So sometimes, you know, you, you have to find out who you really are inside and, and go with it. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're stuck in this box, break out of it, you know, get inside a ball like a hamster and run around. But, um, every day at aerosol warfare, it, it's, it's fun. And that's the thing, like Sarah said, it's fun. It, if you're doing something for the money, if you're doing something because it's a paycheck, but you hate it, then why are you doing it? Uh, real quick, um, a real uh, turning point in my life. I, I was graduating high school in 1990 and I had no clue what I was going to do with myself. And they got the graduating class into the auditorium and they had a motivational speaker come out and talk, right? So he's, they're motivating us. You're going to be somebody. And I'm in the back thinking, whatever. And he gave all these options um, as to what normally people do after college or after high school. You know, some of you are going into the workforce. Some of you are going into uh, straight to college. You might have already been accepted. You know what school some of you guys are going into the military, whatnot. And he gave all these crazy options. And I'm sitting in the back thinking, wow, I must really be a loser because none of those options appeal to me. And so, so he's going on and on. And finally, towards the end, he says, well, look, before you guys head off to do what you're going to do, let me ask you a really important question. And he said, what's, what's the one thing that you love to do so much that you're willing to do it for free? And of course, I'm a smart ass. So I'm like, graffiti. I do it for free anyway. And, and before I could finish that statement, he said, well, whatever you're thinking about, you should consider that as a career. And that just blew my mind. Like being at that age, no one had ever told me you can do whatever you want. It was more like, you need to do this. You need to do that. And uh, it scared me. But for, for this guy who had no clue who I was said, yeah, yeah, you can do, you can be a professional graffiti artist. I'm sure uh, I stuck around I, and I said, you know, I'm a graffiti artist. And he's like, yeah, sure. I'm sure he didn't care. Like, yeah, I'm a professional graffiti artist. That's cool, whatever. I'm pat you on the head and get out of here. But I left feeling really inspired. And since then, I, 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 he, he kind of created this position that probably never existed. But in my mind, it became tangible. And because of that, I, I, I was, I've been striving since then to figure out, well, how can I do that? And it's been a learning curve ever since. But it's been you know, over what, 20 years of planting seeds that are just now starting to fruit. Um, and, and that's kind of how I got to be where I am at today. But the point is that you, you, you have to go with, as cheesy as it sounds, you know, go with your heart, go with, go with your dreams and, and, and try. Like I said, if, even if it's the most, uh, it seems unobtainable, that's the one you should chase. Um, for CKC Start, that was a, an addition to his dream, um, just being able to educate and, and teach. Um, a day for CKC Start would be maybe going to um, a school um, and spending the whole day there um, te uh, lecturing or doing a drawing class or something. Um, we got asked just recently to go to KIPP because the students are, uh, I was going to say hitting up, but doing graffiti over um, all over the restrooms. 
and that's old. We know that that's been going on for years, but they're real concerned. And um, we we understand their concern. Um, we understand that's probably profanity. You know, it's not really um, promoting something positive. So we don't we don't go. And they've asked us to go to the school and talk to the students throughout the day. Um, but not wave a finger. Um, we'll usually more redirect um, and and sort of uh, lead by example. Um, Gans here is a great speaker, as you can see. So he will um, probably go and inspire them just like he was inspired. So <laughs> that's usually what we will do for CKC Start. Um, and I work out of my house. So I first deal with my children because I wake up and remember that I have children. Um, and then, you know, this is going to sound weird, but I have about 1,400 emails in my inbox right now. So um, what I do <laughs> is I look for the word advertise because, you know, I get take advertisements and gish pics, my email newsletter. And anybody that comes up that wants to advertise, I, start, I answer those <laughs> emails. And, you know, so I kind of take care of the money stuff first, like if there's, you know, or I think about my clients, if there's something I need to take care of. And then I spend some good quality time on Facebook um, <laughs> and, and I'm serious about that. I mean, cause then I spend some time just doing fun stuff, you know, because I think that, um, and, and I want to say something too, that everybody is an artist out here, all of you, I, cause I kind of want to make sure that you don't feel like we're just the art icons and we're telling you about this weird life that you can't have. And, and everybody's an artist. So, um, just want to get that out there. But, um, so yeah, I mean, I focus on being creative, finding some fun, um, and then, you know, try to get through my long to-do list. But I do think, and you know, because of my media stuff, I also look for press names to make sure there's no press person that's on deadline. So, um, and try to deal with that if I need to, but it's real important to me to have this mix of kind of the serious business stuff and then the fun stuff, you know, and, and for me, you know, going to parties, going out, that's all part of it. You know, it's not just, you know, I, I don't go to a party and think, oh, I'm just going to a party or I don't, you know, I mean, I, everything is all kind of what you were saying, personal and private. I mean, it's all public. It's it's all kind of mixed up. So, um, and, and maybe that's good and maybe that's bad. I don't know if there's, you know, needs to be more boundaries between my work and my personal life. But for me, it's very kind of tied up together because I'm so passionate about the things I'm doing. So... Well, not only am I as small as a three-year-old, but I, I think like a three-year-old, and I could ask questions and why, why, why um, all day. But if does anybody else have any questions? Yes. Ed? Mm Not me. What did I do? I do. <laughs> well, I do have a willingness. But do I do my <laughs> <laughs> so, so props. Communicating and against the law, is that not street art or not, right? I mean, that's the definition of it. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think that if, if you're, again, maybe I'm just a little too abnormal, but if you stay within the ranks and within the rules, that's where you're always going to be. And you're never going to know. It's, it's like being old and saying, what if? What if I would have faked a badge and gone backstage and hung out with Beyonce? I w you know, you would never met Jay-Z. Oh. So anyhow, yeah, so yeah, I, I think that... that you know, if you have something to say, if you have a product you're going to sell, if you yourself are the product, how are people going to know about you unless you yourself put it out there? And how are you going to do it? You have to communicate. And so if you have to break the law, break the law. I mean, did I say that? No, you shouldn't break the law um, unless you have to. Uh, but no, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only for the good. <laughs> I was going to say something. I can't remember now. Um, I think, I can't remember what I was going to say, but just something about, um, well, just be willing to take risks, you know, and... Um, Gosh, I can't remember what I was going to say. I had a really pithy thought, but looking at Ed made me just lose it. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I think, um, I don't know. It just, it's really important to just be willing. That's what it is. Just be willing to be there at the right place at the right time. That's the thing, because you don't know. You don't know. 
Um, and I think you also have to start where you are. I mean, if you're not the kind of person that likes to break the law or lie, um, which is what I did, I lied. I actually didn't lie because I do photograph. I didn't actually, I will clarify that. Um, I did not lie. I do photograph for the U of H Women's Studies. So I did, they, that's why I did that. Um, but there, there was something, maybe Steve Jobs said it, or maybe it was on Danny Clark's Facebook page, but somebody said something about um, do ask for forgiveness later or, you know, it's like do things and ask. It's easier to ask for forgiveness yeah, than to ask for permission. Yeah. yeah. And somebody had that in, in, on their Facebook page or somewhere to, that I saw today or yesterday. And, and they said something like your life is short. So I, you know, that's my motto. I mean, go out there and, you know, do things. And, and by the way, a big um, tip that I will give you for free is to carry around a clipboard <laughs> Because then people think you're in charge. So if you're trying to get into something, you just carry a clipboard and, you know, they'll, they'll think you're in charge. If I can answer too. That Ed, was for um, free. I mean, you just got your money's worth right there. I think that communication, creativity is definitely a communicative process. So that if I'm making something, I do want somebody's response. Or at least I want them to feel something about it. And then with um, breaking the law, not necessarily breaking the law, but breaking the rules, definitely. That's the whole disrupt and being crazy part of it. And props, I don't really use props, but I like to give props. Hey. She, she, uses <laughs> scar, she uses scarves as props, neck things, funky ties, funky scarves. I think they're related now so that could go on for hours really <laughs> um but design to me is almost more like with a purpose in a way i don't know what come you know if we're going to do free association here what comes to mind for me is like design is kind of this controlled thing and this is not there's no right or wrong i assume but um and then art and creativity are kind of this wild more brainstorming type thing I that, and I think sometimes good design can come out of this creativity. That sounded pretty good. I think like crea I think of creativity as there's this, you know, you are creative. And then design is, like you were saying, there's a strategic um, uh, channel, organization to that creative process. And art is the, the result. I think they all do. It just depends on finding out what problem you're solving. Because I think for art, a lot of it, a lot of times, it's it's communication, or it's expression, so that what your your the problem that you're solving could be like it's something that's subconscious or a feeling that you're trying to get out there. So it's not necessarily that I, I care. What, I want you to get this from this piece of art. It's not as directed, I think, as design is. Unfortunately, I think I saw the stop sign go up there, so. We're out of time, but we'll be here um, afterwards if you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you.